something positive and maybe it'll spread. He's the most positive person on his job. Now you're cured. I feel good. Good morning and welcome to Positively Milwaukee. This Sunday we are celebrating black excellence in Southeast Wisconsin, all in honor of Black History Month. So if you drive through downtown Grafton, you're going to find the home of a legendary music label nearly lost to time. Paramount Records produced music by black artists in the 1920s and the 30s, and we can still hear the influence today. Here's Shannon Sims. It may not look like much to someone passing by, but a unique part of Wisconsin history can be traced back to this now empty plot of land in Ozaki County. Well, uh, it was a um, little known secret that we even had this in our backyard uh, back in early 20s to uh, 30s. <laughs> All that remains of this site next to the flowing Milwaukee River is a concrete foundation and a rusted power wheel, but pieces to a very important puzzle for Grafton historian Angie Mac Riley. A lot of that history was, was left out, almost like it was a little footnote, when in reality it really shaped a lot of who we are. That history is a story of Paramount Records. It was a subsidiary of the New York Recording Laboratories which was a subsidiary of the Wisconsin Chair Company. The Wisconsin Chair Company, headquartered in Port Washington, made phonograph cabinets and to drum up business, they came up with a unique marketing plan. Uh, they were included as a freebie in order to promote the sale of their furniture. Paramount Records made acoustic recordings of popular blues and jazz musicians. And they produced 25% of the nation's race records is what they called them. Um, basically, it was um, music by black musicians. Most of the records that they made were sold in cities like Chicago, Detroit, which had pretty significant uh, black populations at that time. Reggie Jackson is a Milwaukee black historian and talks about the importance of these records. Jazz music, blues music was really a way that, that people who performed in our community uh, really expressed their views about the world around them. Uh, and, and it's an important part of, of the way that we um, kind of showed our resilience uh, dealing with some very difficult times uh, in, in our music. The music styling of the first blues and jazz artists still have a hold on culture today. If you think of the, the recordings in Grafton as the center of this circle, um, people like Charlie Patton, uh, Skip James, Sunhouse, Ma Rainey, um, those recordings influenced other musicians like Johnny Lee Hooker and uh, Muddy Waters, B.B. King, and, and it just keeps going round and round and you get to Bob Dylan and you get to Led Zeppelin. Locally, uh, a lot of people don't understand that the music that we turn on the, mu uh, turn on the radio to listen to uh, was directly influenced by the recordings that were made by Paramount Records in southeastern Wisconsin. Historians say 1,600 songs were recorded during that time at Paramount Records. This is the uh, uh, the precursor to a lot of rock and roll music, and everyone, you know, I think relates to that. But how did it come about? This is where it started. Paramount Records, a unique part of Wisconsin's Black history and American history, something that can be treasured and shared for generations to come. And don't forget, you can dig into the rich history of Paramount with a walking tour through Grafton. There's a blues festival each year in Ozaki County to celebrate its origin in Wisconsin. Part of the importance of American history and black history is to not only remember our past, but understand our laws. That message from a professor and historian for America's Black Holocaust Museum. In the water. This is just one of the exhibits you can see virtually at America's Black Holocaust Museum. In the water. 
white people in the South were angry that people formerly considered property were now equal citizens. Many turned to violence. In the years immediately following the Civil War, thousands of black people were murdered when they tried to claim their rights. These galleries are a great way to learn and teach about black history. I talked to historian and Marquette University professor Dr. Robert Smith over Zoom about what the museum offers. Whether it's a global experience and conversation about people of African descent, whether it's a national conversation about black people in the long black liberation struggle, or if it's the richness of our own local Milwaukee history, it's all right here for you. Dr. Smith tells me all citizens must be educated about their rights. We have to begin to teach our young people about the Constitution much earlier. We do a terrible job as a country making sure that all of our citizens understand that fundamental contract that we have with our government. Republics, like the Republic of the United States, are fragile. You know, our, system, our sense of democracy and our, our approach to democratic practices only work to the extent that we believe in them. Failing to do so, he warns, threatens our democracy. We have to do a re-education campaign as a country to make sure that all of our citizens are buying into this project that is the, the American experiment with democracy. Otherwise, as we've seen here recently, it could very easily be torn asunder. This professor of history loves to see young minds enlightened. You see a young person say, yeah, that, I get it now. Like that, I'm a part of that. I, I'm a part of that, that rich experience. That, that's the best part for me. You can't, there's, no, there's no price I can put on that. Dr. Smith says while we must not forget the pain of the past, we must take deep pride in those civil rights icons who paved the way. As much as we need to teach the difficult histories, we have to also continually teach the rich, beautiful histories that show African Americans in particular pushing back against that kind of racial oppression, whether it was during the institution of slavery, during Jim Crow, or you know, since the civil rights movement of the 1950s and 60s and even today. There are so many brilliant stories of black excellence, and we have to herald those. We absolutely have to do that. Wade in the water, Wade. If you'd like more information about America's Black Holocaust Museum, we have a link to its website on our Positively Milwaukee Facebook page and at tmj4.com slash black history. One Milwaukee man is making an impact on young lives by teaching valuable life skills sometimes overlooked. James Grow tells us about the founder. At first, I didn't want to do it. I didn't really want to go because I thought it was going to be boring and like not fun. Um, actually, to be honest, I didn't really want to come to Bros. But three months later, these young men are still coming to this church at 40th and Center in Milwaukee to learn an important message. And it's not a religious one. Bros stands for Brothers Rising Over Our Streets. At Bros, they teach young black men valuable life skills that are sometimes overlooked in the classroom. Understand and learn how to communicate. That's the biggest key in life. That's founder Robert Boyd. I told myself that I wanted to do something to be there and be that outlet for these young men. He mentors these young teens on how to become men in the community by learning the basics. How to write a check. How to uh, fill out an application. You learn how to be a young man and how to like, tie ties. Make sure when you leave there, they remember your face, they remember your name, and you take action and let them know, hey, this is Josiah. I just wanted to follow up on my interview. It's nothing wrong with doing that. Robert started Bros in 2020 because he wanted to make sure these young men have the male mentorship he never had. Just being as a kid, I lost both of my parents before I was five years old. He is thankful for his two aunts that raised him, but he says they couldn't provide him what his dad could have, a father figure. He doesn't want anyone else to have the same problem. And the biggest thing I want him to take away is to become that man, to become that father, to become that husband, and to be an outstanding citizen of the city of Milwaukee. But beyond that, he wants to empower his students to become the best versions of themselves possible. I made each one of them write themselves out a million dollar check, and I told them to sit on your mirror because I want you to see it every day, because it could be a reality. While they were hesitant at first, members of the inaugural 10-person class say they're glad they took the bros course and would tell others to do the same. I'm trying to fix our like fix our life up before it get ruined and stuff like that. Cause like the environment that we're in right now, it's a lot of kids like younger kids our age are like dying, being killed. To be able to hold your arm and pro provide for others and 
being a leader and teaching others the way to go. There is one key message that Robert emphasizes the most, which connects each individual lesson. Your reality doesn't have to be someone else's perception. And Robert wants to spread that message to as many people as possible. And I want people to understand this is not for young men that doesn't have a father. This is not for young men who's in a poor household. This is for young men, period. Because like I said, we're teaching them to become an older adult. And Robert is doing incredible work teaching young men to be leaders. Still ahead on Positively Milwaukee, one page at a time, we're gonna meet a Racine woman on a mission to share her love of reading with children and the community. Welcome back. We continue our celebration of black excellence. A Racine woman making a difference by sharing her love of reading with kids. Mary Jo Ola has this story. I just celebrated my 70th birthday on January 28th, and I'm not dying my hair anymore. It's going to be great from now on. Julia Witherspoon may be 70 years young, but there is no sign of her slowing down. For more than two decades, she has been committed to getting books to kids, sharing her love for reading. Growing up in Racine, Julia was the oldest of 12. We were very, very poor, very poor. And my parents could not afford books for us. During her career as a Racine police officer, a burglary call at a warehouse jump-started her mission. We told the guy, hit the lights, and he hit the lights. And there were all these children books everywhere. Julia says the 10,000 books headed for the shredder instead went to her. She led fellow officers in handing them out to kids from their squad cars. Kids would be yelling at me, police, stop. Do you have babysitter club? Do you have Clifford? Police, stop. Seeing the demand and with the community's help, Julia created the Cops and Kids Reading Center on Villa Street. Since 1998, donated books continue to pour in and go out to families. STR. Julia and her team bring in tutors to help kids with reading and comprehension. Police officers and other community members often come in to read with them. George Ann Stinson has known Julia for years. She has made a, a huge difference. She has been a person that was able to just be a shining light for the children and, and able to be an example for women. Julia's efforts go beyond giving out free books, even improving police relations. She has been recognized and honored several times across the country. Chapters of Cops and Kids have spread across the world. Never, ever, ever did I imagine it would get this to this magnitude, ever. How do you want people to remember you? She did everything she could to get books into the hands of our kids. She did everything she could to make sure our kids were ready for school. She did everything she could to help our kids. With the pandemic, Julia is taking a break from reading with kids in person, but her passionate work continues. Julia, you are an inspiration. What dedication to our young. A Sherman Park woman is harnessing the healing powers of art and community through her small business. Stephanie Haynes takes us inside her creative space. A few years ago, Chrishella Roche had an idea. She had just gotten back from teaching in Abu Dhabi, where once a month, she and her coworkers would get together and paint. I wanted to create that within my own little community, and I just started looking for space. In 2018, she founded Vibes Creative Arts Space. It's a place for art and fellowship where families, friends, and coworkers can relax and paint. The studio is inside Sherman Phoenix. Well, I love that I like grew up on like 38th Street, and now I have a business on 36th Street. <laughs> when the pandemic hit, Chrishella and her team quickly pivoted to an all virtual model. They prepared take home kits and shared live art lessons. But Chrishella was worried. Then two grants she applied for came through. One was a $10,000 grant from a partnership with the NAACP and pop star Beyonce's charity, Be Good. I definitely uh, shed a tear because one, um, I didn't, we didn't have it to like make sure we didn't like fall behind on our, uh, you know, bills and obligations. Um, but two, it was like, oh my gosh, like the NAACP and Beyonce and her team like really looked at my application was like, that's a great 
uh, thing she's doing there, and I want to see her succeed. The other grant came from a partnership with Caress and I Fund Women of Color, an organization that helps minority women advance their small businesses. Its manager, Olivia Owens, says one of the biggest challenges women of color face as entrepreneurs is accessing funding. And she says that's why any help from the community is critical. For a simple like, share, um, a con contribution to a crowdfunding campaign can go a long way um, for these business owners, not even just from the standpoint of funding, but that validation, that confirmation that they're on the right track, people are seeing what they're doing. Before the pandemic, African-American women were the fastest growing group of entrepreneurs. According to a report from American Express, it found African-American women started more than 760 businesses a day on average. Chrishella hopes she can inspire more women like her to do the same. I didn't have a business plan. All I had was a thought and a feeling that I wanted to share with people. <laughs> like, how do you put a feeling down on paper? So I just had a thought and a feeling and I wanted to get that, you know, I wanted to get that to other people. Way to go. Vibes Creative Art Space is opening up a studio for a safe and socially distant family day. Every Saturday from 12 to 6, kids and parents can come in and paint, do arts and crafts, and most importantly, just have fun. Still ahead, this week's Reason to Smile, plus living his dream. Meet a young man with Milwaukee roots who's now a designer for one of the world's biggest brands. His message to aspiring youth. Welcome back. A young man with Milwaukee roots living his dream of designing for one of the world's largest sporting brands. Shannon Sims shares his story. It all started with a number two pencil, a piece of paper, and Andrew Little's parents nurturing a budding artist. They would put me in art classes when I was like really young. You know, something that I just really enjoyed doing, so I just stuck to it um, throughout school, throughout high school. Um, all while playing sports. Growing up, Little loved basketball and golf, but his attention turned to sports shoe designing when a college recruiter visited his art class at Nicolet High School. She put a, a shoe rendering on the, on the board, on the presentation, and she said it was done by this, uh, you know, this, this student that went to, went to CCS and he was now the design director at Jordan and he was black. And I kind of was just like, I never had seen that before. I didn't, I didn't, you know, attribute black footwear designers at that time. That moment opened up a world of possibilities that led Andrew to Nike's headquarters in Oregon. So I was an intern for three months and, and that was basically just like a three month job inter interview. After the three months, I, I was luckily hired. Since joining the Nike team, Andrew Little has designed a number of tennis shoes you can find online and in stores. I see people in the airport when I'm traveling, like wearing my shoes sometimes. So it's, it's pretty surreal. Like it's, a, it's, it's pretty cool though. And he has a few high profile fans to sport his designs like these slip on sandals. Most recently LeBron, he actually wore a pair of, of shoes that I designed in the finals for, uh, for game five. Last year, though, Little, who was once a ball boy for the Bucks, got the chance to design his home team's city jersey. So it was really about, like, how do you storytell and how do you take elements of Milwaukee that, you know, people are familiar with and really, you know, explain that and explore that in a, in a jersey for the city. It was a huge honor. Um, it's, still, it's still a moment that I, I, can't, I can't believe. As our country is faced with addressing racial injustice, Little believes brand responsibility will be more and more important. A Nike that relies so much on, on the people and the communities that make them great and that, that make their product really stand out. Um, and so I'm just happy to be a part of, you know, the Nike brand to, to really, uh, you know, drive that, that vision home. Andrew Little is living his dream as a sports apparel designer and he hopes that he can inspire other youth to do the same. If you don't recognize other people in that space, then how will you be able to, you know, attach yourself to that vision? Pretty incredible. Now more artists have something to smile about. Milwaukee Oscar winner and No Studios founder John Ridley is launching a grant program to support emerging Wisconsin artists. This self-funded program is pledging $100,000 every year, and it's gonna focus on underserved areas. 
I've never forgotten what it's like to try to find the resources to complete the projects that I wanted to complete. The first application round begins in early March with grants awarded in June. To find the application, all you have to do is go to tmj4.com slash links. A Milwaukee nonprofit is baking up good energy. Ike's Gourmet makes tasty treats for dogs, but it's also giving adults with disabilities a chance to reach their potential. Douglas Staff is one of the busy bakers in the kitchen. It's excellent. I mean, terrific. Mm -hmm. And if we could get more people involved with it, it would be much perfect. And guess what? The dog treat business is booming, but they still need help. You can go to IkeCenter.com to lend a hand or IkesGourmet.com if you'd like to buy some treats to help out. I'll be back with my quote of the week. Don't go away. Well, every week I love to leave you with an inspirational message. This week's comes from African-American poet Nikki Giovanni. She says, quote, everything will change. The only question is growing up or decaying. Now that's something to think about. And we want to thank you for spending your Sunday morning with us and for joining us. This was a special edition of Positively Milwaukee celebrating black excellence. We hope you enjoyed it. Have a wonderful week and don't forget as always, stay Positively Milwaukee. Thank you.